Mic check, one, two, one, two. You hear me, Andrew? I, I know you hear me. I just, I think I always wanted to say mic check, one, two, one, two. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I just always wanted to say that. Well, anyway, <clears throat> man, it's my birthday today. It's my birthday. We finally here. It's been a long year of making um, these ideas with this, but we finally here to do it, man. Welcome, everyone, to the Major Conversation Podcast. I am your host, Major Mook. Um, we're live at We Major Studios, live from Kenner, Louisiana. And um, before the podcast starts, I just want to let everyone know that no, we won't be doing this every week. <laughs> um, but we will do it, and we will do it tastefully, and you're going to enjoy it. I would like to consider it. I don't know what my man going to put for us in the categories, uh, entertainment, um, um, self-help. I'm not sure what it's going to be under, so I guess I'll just say lifestyle. We're going to discuss uh, music, fashion, um, good people, bad people, <laughs> um, just the universe, a little bit of politics, a little bit of religion, a little bit of everything. Um, some of you are probably shocked because it's like um, 50-50 with me. Some people know me as um, kind of a quiet, chill guy, play the background of everything that's going on. And then those that know, know me, know me as um, the asshole guy that's always screaming and yelling and, and trying to push the culture forward for what I believe in. So yeah, we're going to get a lot of all that on this podcast journey. Um, another reason why we're doing a podcast is because we own a studio. That's always good. <clears throat> so when nobody raps, the studio just sits. So hey, why not do a podcast, right? So today is my birthday, Friday the 13th. I won't tell y'all my age, but I'm getting younger. And, um, yeah, this is my gift to everyone. Our first guest is um, a great guy. goes by the name of Sean, the owner of Refresh. But I won't get into too much of that because the interview is following this introduction. And just, we got music. Yes, we got sir. set up some fire music, yeah. Well, all right, here we go. Um, live from We Major Studios, the Major Conversation Podcast. We Major. Nigga, we major. Yeah, nigga, we major. Yeah, homie, we major. My check, what up, world? This is your man's Major Mook. Welcome to Major Conversation Podcast, Episode One. And today I am sitting with, got to get my introduction together, right, huh, Hen? Because, man, um, for, for, for y'all that know me, <laughs> y'all know I don't really listen to too many people. <laughs> y'all know I kind of move at, at my own pace. Um, I kind of, you know, I, I, I kind of like to put my hand on fire and feel it and, you know, go from there. But, um... This gentleman sitting with me, um, I honestly, humbly can say he, I really do view, view him as one of my mentors of very few. Um, every conversation we have, I, I take from it. So for episode one, um, it just made sense due to, you know, trying to do this podcast thing. And, you know, I'm not a journalist. I don't really do all this interview shit. So I knew our conversation would be super genuine. Um, the biggest thing I problem I had was how to introduce him as a title, because he does so much shit. Um, and he does so much shit at a great level. So I'll start off and I'll let him correct me and really give, you know, his background of it. But everybody give it up for my man Sean, the owner of Refresh Boutique. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, world? How y'all doing? What's up, man? Man, so how, how did we meet, up. man? How did we meet? I, I know I was living in L.A. Music industry. Music, and okay, yeah. And I yeah, met... I, I, I was coming through New Orleans with artists, and I think you was uh, the Def Jam or Universal rep. I mean, it might have been. Or was it Asylum? I, I know when I first got here, I was fuck messing with uh, Asylum. Man, that's a graveyard now. Well, I uh, know it, was, it was definitely it was something. Yeah, marketing music. It definitely was that world. Okay, uh, okay. 
And um, how long were you down here by that time? Like, were you even here yet, or were you? Well, where were you originally from? For those that don't know, what year was that though? Like, what what year is it? When, I, did, when did you move here? I moved back to New Orleans, uh, two thousand ten. I want to say. Nah, so yeah, I want to say. I moved back to New Orleans at the end of uh, end of oh seven. Okay. The beginning of oh eight. Okay. Okay. So I might have been here in oh nine then. Because I felt like you just opened up the spot here. The store opened, it was All-Star Weekend 2008. Okay. Uh, that, so that was Valentine's Day weekend. Nice, uh, nice. In 2008, so. And hey man, we're in 2019. A lot of places in, in, this, in this city, this market definitely don't last that damn long when, when you're relying on a consumer-based income. So I got to give you props for just that, man. It's, 20, it's probably 2020, so. But I think I think that one of the reasons because of that is because, for me, I don't I don't look at it's kind of odd owning a clothing store and I say I don't look at I don't look at the I don't look at the culture as consumers I look at mm. them as participants. Nice. Um, so, you know, it's always about catering to the culture and supplying the culture with what they need. So whether it's knowledge, clothing. Substance, you know, like things that just allow you to uh, to grow and plant seeds and uh, do the things that's necessary for for growth to continue. Um, I think that's one of the things that has always been a cornerstone from my perspective is uh, give and you'll receive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you give give with no intention. You know what I mean? Like because the gift of giving is a gift. Right, right, <laughs> you know right, right. Now that's real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. now you're right. That's that's definitely true. Um, and I'm sure because you're originally from Brooklyn, right? Or is it Brooklyn? Yeah, best Brooklyn. Out? Okay. Um, but I tell people I'm a citizen of the world. Like Brooklyn. Yeah, is that's definitely... why. And that's that's what leading up to my question. Yeah. You could have opened up something probably anywhere. Why you? Why did you pick New Orleans? I mean, is it well, roots, when I, family, when I, when I moved to the New culture Orleans, here. Initially. Uh, was in the end of my 11th grade year of okay. high school. Uh, okay, so so, very, so, so, so you have roots here. Roots in the, in the concept of I know the, I know the city, I know the culture, and I became a man here. Hmm. So New Orleans will forever have a, that, that, that spot. You know what I mean? Like, That's real. So, and you know, when I first moved to New Orleans, it was 92. You know, the city was turned up. It was a murder capital. Um, but for me, it was... How did you move through through that chaos? I, was, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, so... Gotcha. Point taken. It was... The <laughs> energy was familiar. Um, and me just being who I am, I'm a loner by, by nature. Uh, you know, I, I respect... I respect energy, so I always knew how to move and when to leave. That's real. You know, like I learned that I survival learned that is survival. Age. You know, people people <clears throat> always put a, uh, I guess, try to say, "Hey, well, I'm from here and I move like this," and instead of third. But the reality is, is, if you know how to survive in any environment that's hostile, if you pay attention to what that felt like, you know what it is. You need to do right. how to move. Right. Um, so it, what's that phrase? Is never where you not where you're from is where you're at. Real talk. So you take you take those those experiences and that knowledge and you know I I can tell you I ran with I mean New Orleans I mean you, 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 you I'll be lying if I tell you I didn't know dudes that were killers. And, right. Right. You know, but I I also know that these are real people. Um, and we live in the real world, and circumstances are what they are. Um, but understanding that the human aspect of uh, anybody, I think Jay Electronica said this uh, a little bit more poignantly. He said, man, a dude could be, you know, I, I could be, the quote, I'm not going to say it verbatim because I, I can't remember, but the gist of it was, you know, a dude could be a stone-cold killer, but if you show him love, he's going to light up. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. And now, and, my, uh, my my older brother always said, um, the the most um, 
the most respectful people are people that, that did time in jail, serious time. Yeah. Yeah, like those, those are the most respected people ever. I mean, especially, especially culturally in our community, you know, circumstances are very relevant to how we may make a decision that could alter the rest of our lives. And that's yeah. for everybody. Yeah, definitely. But definitely we're put in a position to whereas it's do or die, right? Mm. So most of the time we are banking on that one scenario to catapult us to the heavens or, you know, to our highest point. Right. And in success and when that doesn't work, we digress into this other some of you know what I'm saying, not everybody, but we tend to digress in a way that this it pushes us in that, that world and uh you know. Well whatever rules um you you went by, they definitely worked, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Looking back and then looking at you now, yeah, you yeah, you definitely was able to to maintain. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's survived. You know, like yeah. my, me and my mom, we moved a lot as a kid. You know, coming from Brooklyn, lived in Florida, moved here. Um, you know, so those experiences and interactions uh, afforded me the ability to pay attention. You know, not like I said, I was a loner, so I always observed people's movements and their their, their posture. You know what I mean? And that right. told me, all right, I can see what this is going to turn into or what that's going to be about. But like, you know, but going back to your original. You know, New Orleans is, uh, definitely has a special part uh, for me. And, uh, you know, before I came back in 07, I was, you know, essentially getting ready to move to... Pretty good. I left yeah. the music industry. I, uh, I, you know, I was in transition and, you know, looking for the path I wanted to take. Um, in my next chapter and, uh, you know, coming back here was really just a rebirth and, you know, in a lot of different ways. Uh, Cause I was actually gonna move to Japan in 2007, looking at places to live and everything. Nice. Um, but, you know, the store was, we talked about the store. The store was broke initially in 2003. Um, Life happened. Katrina happened. Yeah, and uh, you know, kind of it went dormant for a little bit, and literally, probably, I want to say uh, September, October, it came back up. We started looking for a place. November, December, found the place. February, two thousand eight. Right, um, and you know. It you know even saying that and, and, you know, I think about that and it sounds magical but definitely definitely <laughs> but like I said the the seed was planted in '03 yeah and from there kind of like you know was right well I don't want to lose my my thought um, yeah. my train of thought on the original the next question but the but a side note I fell in love with this story when I first moved back here because um, I never seen nothing like this in New Orleans and I was coming from living in L.A. I actually was um, doing an internship. I pair of my pictures, but I was working at this sneaker store called Sporty LA on Melrose. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I mean, we had like every shoe, like it was it was crazy. Like I never coming from New Orleans going on, I I never saw no shit like that. So when I moved back to New Orleans, it was like just dead, you know. So when you when I when I walked into here, I was like, wow, like it just I could tell, in other words, you know, no disrespect to you know, the, the New Orleans culture, all the fans, you were just way ahead of, of what we had going on here, like, by miles and miles and miles. You but know I what think, I'm saying? I think, you know, like, for me, you know, being a non-native New Orleanian, but also respecting the culture, I always think New Orleans is definitely the birthplace of a lot of things yeah. globally that aren't, that they're not getting recognized for. You know what I mean? The city definitely. of New Orleans is, is birthed a lot of... Uh, trends and movements and you know and I think I think because it's just so natural for for the city to do that they don't really take it in any particular way right but right. if it was Brooklyn they would right. hold up you know what right, I mean? right, <laughs> like, right 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 you know right I mean so but but I think that's a, a a blessing too you know what I mean because if you're that creative and your 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 city and your culture is is giving life to a whole bunch of other stuff then 
You know, what you got to be mad about? Real talk, yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I but I do I do think that it people need to you know pay 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 their respects though. Right. Um Yo, PSA, to all of my business owners out there, I won't say small business because I believe if it's big in your head, then it's big to the universe. But anyway, here at the Major Conversation Podcast, we are offering sponsorships, ads. Um, You can reach out to me through my DM, Major Mook, um, or you can email me at wemajormnm at gmail.com. Once again, that's wemajormnm at gmail.com. And um, you can let me know about your business. I send you the office sheet, and you can get all of your company's information promoted through the podcast or through the interviews. So, yeah, once again, that's wemajormnm at gmail.com and also Major Mook on Instagram. You can DM me your information also. Peace. Back to the interview. You know, we're going to get back to the store. Yeah. But um, switch gears to the music. Like, what, what, what was your musical background? Because... <clears throat> During that time, uh, and I'm a guy that you know we you know we we socialize with people at events and this and that, and you know of course everybody's important in the room at these little networking f- functions and mixers of course, but you know there's certain names someone can say or certain you know situation that I would that lets me know that okay this person really is mm-hmm. you know doing or uh, whatever it is what they say they're doing. So I remember when we when we first met and I, I think I was with Atlantic at the time. Um, and um, you dropped a couple names like Frank Johnson and things like that. I'm like, oh, well, this guy really does mess with the music thing. So, like, where, when did you start with the music and what all did you do right. with the labels and things like that? Because I, I don't think a lot of people know that background. I think they think you more yeah, just Yeah, I mean, for me, that was thing. like a whole lifetime ago. But, I mean, I guess that's a question that everybody asks. Yeah. But, you know, like, for me, I, I was an artist back in 18, 19, 20. Um, had a group locally. Uh, we performed locally. I mean, New Orleans had a very progressive hip hop scene. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think people understand that. We're talking about the years we're talking about, just so you can guys have a, a time of references. Like, yeah, well, my my partner's right. So yeah, I, I yeah, that hip hop. Yeah, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight ish. Yeah, yeah, that so, was Raj and them doing that hip hop uh, stuff too during that time. Said Raj. Yeah. So, but Raj was. Yeah, exactly. The young boy. Okay, yes. Yeah, so you know, by so, him being my right hand, I'm able to so, hear about so all the. So WAP. Yeah, WAP. So WAP so and all them. So we had a we had a crew called Transparent Arsenal. Don't laugh at that. <laughs> Transparent. Um, that sounds like but, some hip hop. But WAP and them, <laughs> But WAP, WAP, WAP and his crew were called Cycle War. Yeah, Cycle War. Cycle. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was like, you know... Uh, yeah, had y'all look uh, competitive uh, yeah, competition yeah, yeah, yeah. going. Yeah, you know, it was definitely yeah. that, you know, Matt, yeah, Matt and Storm. Shot. You know, it yeah. was like some people that, uh, I guess, you know... Not to cut you off, if y'all hear any any of this going on, and I don't want my man Hendrix to edit too much, but we are downtown New Orleans. His, his boutique is downtown New Orleans, so we got clubs, we got... Uh, police calls flying by, all kinds of stuff y'all may hear, but we, yeah, we gonna keep it in. And man. it's eleven fifteen at night, so, so it's, it's for all my out of town people, this is New Orleans. Yeah. Like we don't sleep. Like so you, you, you getting it in the French Quarter? We live. Yeah, we in the French quarters, <laughs> literally in the French quarters. But yeah, finish telling me about the hip hop days, man. But you know, like like New Orleans, like New Orleans, at that time had its own identity, which was rich in culture, but it was still trying to like assess. Whether it was East Coast, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. you know, yeah. when you, and, and yeah. then you had the whole West Coast influence. But I think, I think at that time in New Orleans, it was the best of both worlds because people were listening to Nas, mm-hmm. Jay Z's Reasonable Doubt, uh, you know, and all the West Coast uh, yeah. Bone Thugs yeah. and Harmony, yeah. you know, anything that was coming from that from from both worlds. Um, and really kind of just taking bits and pieces from it and uh, adaptively just, you know, really like just experiencing the music. But at the time, I, you know, Bounce definitely was his own mm-hmm. and still is. Yeah. Was his own thing. And, you know, everybody that they bounced, they was in a, you know, it, they had their old little, little clubs and this was a little movement they had. Right. Um, but, you know, the, I moved a little bit everywhere. So, for you older heads, you know, I, I would be, because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an explorer. Mm-hmm. So I'll be in rumors, 
Hmm. The bottom line, whispers. Now, I mean, I, I ain't talking about that. whispers. Yeah, the no, new one. I'm exactly. talking about the old yeah. one. Yeah, uh, I was only able to parking lot pimp that. Yeah, I <laughs> wasn't even old enough to get in. So you know, but for me, I, 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 you guys can't see me, but I, I'm I would I'm, I'm like a unicorn in these spots because yeah, back then definitely. I had dreads, uh, and nobody in New Orleans had dreads. Yeah, uh, but I'm moving in these spots. Um, really just taking it all in and, and just understanding what it was that made New Orleans New Orleans. And, you know, that's what really understanding that and seeing that and coming from Brooklyn and knowing that energy, um, it, it felt like home, you know, and that, that, that's really one of those things to where either, you, either you're going to feel at home or you're not. And New Orleans definitely resonated with me in a way that uh, we connected, you know what I mean? So it's... Uh, so for you to start getting into those major labels buildings, was that more of from so, your music? So for or, me, yeah. so back then, my crew, you know, my crew, I, I, I was, I was always the, I guess, the most upwardly mobile member. <laughs> right. <laughs> Had right. a job. I, I was focused. I was the youngest, but I was the most ambitious. Yeah, and I think that's because my perspective and where I came from and my, and my experiences afforded me the ability to see past what was happening at the time and, and not necessarily look at what wasn't there, what could be. And, you know, so when we would go to these music conferences and present our music, I was the one speaking to the executives. Yeah. And from there, I built relationships which, you know, afforded me the ability to... Uh, have access, and artists would come to town. You know, they would ask me to liaise, and you know, so that kind of turned into a. But even before then, I was doing marketing, uh, like grassroots marketing for uh, different uh, ad agencies and so forth and so on. And really, the, my first experience with music marketing uh, on a on a on a major scale really was through me doing a campaign with HBO. Um, which was an affiliation with uh, Russell Simmons' ad agency, which is called D Rush. Yeah, yeah. So from there, you know, actually the HBO execs uh, wanted me to come and work for them, and I was like, nah, that's not my path. And then I got a call from Def Jam, and it was like, yo, we heard from the ad agency that, you know, you know, the, the campaign went very well in uh, New Orleans. So it was like, man, we want you to come up to New York. Um, and I was like, uh, you know, at the time I was in the, in, in the transition phase, so it all kind of worked out pretty well. Uh, and from there, I left New Orleans, let's say, in the 98, beginning of 99. Uh, went to New York, was became the national director of marketing for. Uh, at the time, it was Def Jam, but then it turned into Island Def Jam, mm -hmm. um, and I toured with. Uh, gosh, I mean, Jay Z, Cisco, Music Soul Child, Redman, Method Man, yeah, uh, the Golden a, Eras, Ludacris. Yeah, uh, I mean anybody that was on Def Jam. Um, in the late 90s up to mid-2000, you know, I was a part of that, those projects and, you know, I traveled and toured and, and did all the things that uh, I guess a young 20-year-old year, 20 uh, would want to do. Um, but yeah, so that was my inroads into, I guess, the music industry. Um, and, you know, I, I have a lot of good relationships and people that I... I still keep in contact with, like I said earlier, you know, it, to me, it's, 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 uh, it seems like a lifetime ago, but. Now, was, yeah, was you doing, um, was you creating mentally the, the store in your head while you was doing that, or, or was this already nah, something that I was mean, already I mean, to be flowed? totally honest with you, if you would have asked me, we've been going in our 11th year now. Yeah. Yeah. If you would ask me, I would. I, I, like I said before, I was going to move. To, I was moving to Tokyo. I was trying yeah. to go to Japan. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so I had no real at that point in my life. Uh, even when I was in the music industry, my whole goal was really just I wanted to have a full fledged ad agency. Yeah. Um, that was my true 
goal at the time. And, you know, I studied all the the schematics on starting an ad agency and, you know, acquiring uh, accounts and creating decks. And all of this may be foreign to you guys, but this is like advertising lingo. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, you know, and the harsh reality of the ad industry is that it's, it's predominantly... No, it's almost 100% controlled by white men. Definitely. And, you know, uh, the the gravity of that, when I left the music industry, I, I had approached or reached out to uh, all of these organizations that position themselves as, uh, I guess, helping us in the community, men of color, people of color, NAACP, uh, 100 black men, and, you know, I have a very professional posture. Um, so I reached out to these directors at these different organizations and, you know, sent them an email. Hey, you know, I, you know I'm a young entrepreneur. I have an ad agency. I'm looking to uh, potentially work within your, your network. You know, if you don't have the time, maybe your assistant uh, could contact me or somebody within your department, blah, blah, blah. And uh, never got an email back or a reply or a response. And, you know, I think about that moment a lot because it really was uh, pivotal in the perspective of me saying, hey, this is me leaving the music industry. I'm really going to aggressively do what I said I was going to do when I first went in. And, you know, I have the contacts. I have the relationships. Um, Let's go. And, you know, it it was a real gut check um but i put my i've been in so many situations in my life where i uh, just got to pick up the pieces and keep it moving so i just kept it moving you know i I still do marketing and and consulting to this day but that definitely was one of those moments where i like i I have to modify my portfolio and Um, and and just help you out on that um i actually um hendrix uh, y'all gonna hear his name throughout you know, this journey, this podcast journey, but I, I talked to him a lot about um, consultant fees and things like that. Due to a conversation man, you had maybe a few years ago when you were like, yo, I, I don't know if you remember this, we have so many good conversations. You was like, you know, nothing's wrong with you asking for a fee when, mm-hmm. when niggas hit your phone for questions or this and that, like, you, you know, like that, like that, that is a job, giving people information, you know, I, and, and I, that stuck with me. I, for, I, for quite some time. Um, I, I don't think we really understand how potent our, yeah. not, like, our perspective is. Yeah. And what perspective you have a certain sense of acute knowledge that affords you the ability to understand things that people outside of our community don't get. So, you know, uh, even in fashion, right? So, you know, years ago, these fashion brands, I'm not going to say any names, um, that catered to our community would literally go in the, the hoods or the neighborhoods and see some some stylish uh, urban kids, you know, bring them into the office and they're like, hey, what's, what are you guys into? Not, you know, um, getting information out of these kids that's really helping them build multi-million dollar plays. Mm. And, you know, all these kids are walking away with is care packages. You know, right. Some hoodies and some jeans and yeah, be safe. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. um, and you've, you, they, these kids are giving them four or five Everything. years of, of strategy um, and how to sell and present to our community. And you know, the the concept of consulting and even asking for money is a foreign thing because we're so used to, oh, all right, our labor is mm-hmm. our money, but really, our knowledge is our money. Right. And and I think that's a hard concept for a lot of young men of color to understand. Yeah, I, de- I definitely didn't get it, you know, during, during that time, you know, because I'm actually in the game playing, so I really wasn't viewing myself, like, I guess, as a coach or as an advisor. So I'm not thinking... Well, that... that yeah, I'm not thinking I can, you know, I can actually just coach. I ain't got to play if... People coming to, to me for the plays, yeah. you know, if, if, if that makes sense. You the, know what I'm well, that 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 psychology is 
I mean, it's a learned behavior. And I'm yeah. saying that because, you know, the history of, uh, you know, the United States, is, it, it is what it is. You know, and freedom comes in the form of liberating your mind. And if you think because you're free and you can walk up the street and, and do whatever it is you do, then your concept of freedom is kind of, I guess it would be normal, um, but freedom dictates that you are free to think mm. and, and, and understand what your, what, your, what your true value is. And your true value isn't in what you do for others, is what you can apply for yourself to nurture your own personal sense of perspective and growth. And let me say it a little simpler complex, like simpler context. If, if somebody is not willing to break bread with you in any, any capacity, whether it's, uh, and, 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 and value comes in all forms. It can, it can come in knowledge. It can come in money. Um, it can come in, in you know, in different, different forms that afford you the ability to take whatever that is utilize it to your best ability and create your own sense of perspective of what that is. If you are working with people that don't allow you or aren't willing to, or, and I'm using these words specifically because if somebody's allowing you, then you're already in a bad situation. Right. Um, you need to go into any situation with the thought process of, I, this is what I can bring, and this is what I am, and this is what I want. And if you live by those rules and you understand the power in that, you get anything you want in life. So um, I found, actually found out that, so, you, so you're saying that you, you, really, you are enjoying sitting back watching this new generation operate their business. Because they, they are really all rolling off of exactly what you just said. Yeah, that, so it's, it's, yeah. it's two prongs for this generation. And I was about to say millennials, but I just found out that we are the, they are called Generation Next. Wow. Millennials are from th 29 to 40. I just found that out. Like, you know, y'all can Google that. I thought these little youngsters was millennials, but they actually, they're called Generations Next. Hendrix over there laughing because I always call him a millennial. But yeah, so I need, yeah, y'all not millennials. We are the millennials. That's 30, 30 age people. I, but anyway. <laughs> I, I feel like this is, I mean, I guess every generation has a gift and a curse. Yeah. Right? So but, yeah but, but, but they are definitely rolling off, off of your strip. Like yeah. these, yeah, well, fresh I mean, out but, of college. But, but really, you have to, I mean, yeah. fresh out of high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so even like, fresh out of high school. Really, yeah, definitely. So, and I, and, and how old are you? 37. Why you been yeah. say that on So, air? no, 36, but today, y'all. I mean, I'm 43. No, so. but no, it's crazy because this, this is coming out on my birthday. So, all right, all yeah, right. 37. So, yeah, I said that right. Happy pre birthday. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyway, like, so my generation, it, it, they paint, they gave us this, this, this perfect picture. What you got? Uh, you finish high school with, the 4.0 and you get into the best high school uh, college and you marry the, the perfect girl and you buy a house with a white picket fence and yeah, you know you yeah. work a job for 20 30 years and you retire and yeah yeah I caught a I, yeah I caught a little that, bit of that yeah all of that sounds super boring yeah and even me growing up in that 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 era it's just like wow that's it that's that's all I'm going to get like I I it sounds it sounds comfortable and easy. I won't. But I it won't, don't sound fun. I won't edit this at all. But um, I actually took that whole thing and ran with it. After I I kind of calmed down, and yeah, I got divorced right after that shit because it wasn't fun at all. But so, so I'm with you with that. I, I but got you know, for, the but, good but, job, but, but, but the some, big house, the the kids, and it was yeah. So like yeah, that so, shit wasn't so the, fun at all. So so. But for some people that works. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah but, it won't work for me at all. It didn't work at all. You know, so like that 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 reality is good for for some, but when you are when you're able to think in this yeah. the, the now generation, I'm gonna just call it. I don't know what they're called exactly. Yeah. But we're gonna say the generation that's now, right? Yeah. So they have so much information and opportunity at a fingertip. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's the deal breaker. You right can there. learn. Yeah. Yeah. Any skill, 
coding, uh, pro, you know, like any anything that you need to learn, you don't have to go to college for. Uh-uh. You can have a turnkey business today. Yeah. Now I told the young man he's 15, and I do this with everybody that comes in here, and they they you know this this glorified life that is presented to us where we're going to be rappers, producers, whatever, which is which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I told him I said, as a man, you know. You know, if you had a responsibility of taking care of your family and you said, hey, I'm going to become a producer, right? And if you told me you're going to be a producer and I take, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to take you to somebody tomorrow. You have product, you, do you have material that will get you paid tomorrow? Right. And he was like, well, I don't know. I never did anything. I said, okay, so that's not real today. Mm. I'm not saying it's not real in your life, but it's not real today. I said, what, what can you do? Right? He said, well, um, I can produce. He said that again. And um, he said, I want to get into fashion. I in other words, oh. he's freestyling his life. Yeah, so, like. but, but he's 15, right? Oh, okay, right. Yeah, so I okay, said, okay, okay, let, okay. Me, let, me, let me give you a scenario, right? You're 15 years old. Um, you, know, you know how to use social media, right? Yeah, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I said, this is the easy business for you. Go find five people today that need help setting up and, and, and uh, maintaining their social media platform. Mm. Charge each of those people 250 a month. You have a business. Mm. Realistic. You can find five people that's going to give you 250 a month to manage and maintain. So that perspective affords you the ability to think, oh, okay, well, yeah, I can monetize a very simple skill set to, to in, in, in his mind, but it's, it's a value. The value is compounded for somebody that doesn't understand that. Exactly. So these are the things that in the cues, and, they're, you know, they're not teaching these kids, hey, you can monetize that. Or, right. You know, you can do things today that helps you uh, build your future. Right, right. Um, so, you know, for me, that's always a test. Like, you know, I get, I get people coming here all the time. Man, I'm a photographer. Right? Yeah. I'm yeah. a fashion, I'm a stylist. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it today. Oh, and that, yeah, <laughs> and, and that, that, that sounds way really me back to what I wanted to go to about, about the boutique. Um, because I remember during that time in, in, the, in the early stages, um, this was like a, like, a, like a damn fashion coffee house type thing. Like, all of the, you know, the hippies, the streetwear guys, they would just post here and have those kind of dialogues with you, you know, um, like every single day. And then at one point, you, um, and, I, and I want to ask you why or, you know, for whatever reasons, but you made a drastic change from, you know, this, this beautiful place we're in now with all this, you know, super extra design stuff that, you know, it takes a lot to get in. You at one point had the the exclusive Jordans and yeah, the, I mean, the, the so, top, the, you know, the bathing apes and things like that. But you just went totally left to where, honestly, bluntly, like the the level you put in here didn't match the people that was kind of kind of using it. Shifted, it shifted, right? yeah. You sh- it's like, but you so, personally shifted so, it yourself. So going back to what you said when you first when you came back to New Orleans and you came mm-hmm. in the space and you was like, wow, right, right. right. So that was. 09, right? Right, right. So, so let's think about that. Like, 09, let's say up until when I did this transition was uh, end of 14, beginning of yeah, 15. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Right? So, the story, to be totally honest with you, was in a very stagnant one note. It stayed the same for, for, for like a good solid two, three years. Right, right. And, you know, st- Streetwear culture, which I don't even like that terminology, yeah. um, because that's a new form of uh, um, downgrading something. Yeah, I so it's you. it's I it's you. you know to be honest with you, streetwear culture is really kids from the hood yeah. that couldn't afford to buy the stuff that would at the time validated them as being. Yeah, uh, I got it. Yeah, you know, so these kids took whatever they had, made it fly. And that's true streetwear. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but 
you know, when we came into the market, we were we were a unicorn. Like we we, yeah. we carried brands and we did things that were different. We could, we we included the community um, in what it was we were doing, and that's that's what it was about. It was about the inclusiveness and the allowing the kid that didn't think um, in yeah. those yeah you know in the lines. Um, to be able to have a space to to be able to express and, and nurture and cultivate that sense of perspective and not be judged. And, you know, and I think that at that time, post-Katrina, the kids in New Orleans, you know, you, you, you go in the French Quarter. Like, bef- before Katrina, kids, nobody, no kids was coming in the French Quarter. They weren't hanging out. Um, that wasn't a thing. And after Katrina, the kids were really trying to stay out of trouble. Yeah. They were skateboarding. You would see kids yeah. go up and down the street in droves, yeah. just skateboarding. Yeah. Um, fashion was, you know, people, I think I, there was a whole little crew that was running around here doing the whole 90s yeah. uh, little play. And I, they had it down to the T. So you see in all these different pockets of, uh, of not just black kids, but it was white kids. I mean, I mean, all different backgrounds that were basically bonding in... Uh, Really showing the new New Orleans, like it was, it was refreshing to see that, right. um, and to be in the the epicenter of that movement was definitely a beautiful thing. Especially me saying, like I said earlier, me becoming a man in New Orleans and knowing what it was, you know, I guess ten years before that or however long ago that was, but. You know, to see it kind of move into this whole new way of uh, of kids wanting to kind of apply themselves in a different way. The energy was different. You know, they 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 were staying in the quarter to stay out the way. Um, and you know, I think when and I think you and I had this conversation. You like, you think it's gonna work? I said, yeah, I, I was I was gonna get to that because because it, it was it, it it was necessary, right? Because now, well, before you answer that yeah. question, just what made you? Like since you, I mean, of course, things are, it goes in, things are numbers, of course. So, from a business standpoint, I guess you see numbers and 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 the progression or degression or whatever case. What made you say I'm about to lay it online and go, you know, go this high? Is it safe to say high end? So, but way? like, so like it, what? for me, I didn't know what the numbers were going to look like because it didn't matter to me. Right. I knew that it needed to happen. Right. And. If you're the first to make it happen, which you was, or or progress in that way, you like like they say, if you build it, what's, what's the phrase? You, you build, build it, it they'll come. Yeah. So, but they also a phrase that say when the first one knocked through the door gets shot. So I think that was more my question that they were you like man you yeah you but know. then we then we then we go back then we go back to survival yeah right yeah so. All right, you 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 gotta know how to walk through that door if you know there's someone on the other side of that motherfucker. Yeah, well, right, <laughs> you know right, what I'm right, right. So, right. so you could be stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that context, but no, I mean it it was no, calc- no, that point was, taken. Yeah, I got it, you. It was calculated from the perspective of I know I didn't question at any point that it wasn't gonna work. Yeah, and having come in from day one. The store kind of just really just captivating the city. Uh, if I if I knew how to make ten million dollars and I lost it, I know how to make ten ten million again. Mm. You know what I mean? And that was uh, and it's always like since we since the, since the day we opened the store, it's always been about educating, mm. educating on brands. Educating on why, uh, what's the price points? How do you reference that? Um, it's always been that sense of perspective of teaching and familiarizing and and testing the waters and getting people to break down those those stigmas of what they know as being normal. And normal is just a concept, you know. Uh, like I was saying, the 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 white picket fences and the you know that that the whole yeah. portrait painting. Um, if you live within that painting, then yeah. Yeah. If you see anything outside of that, you're gonna be like, wow, wow. And that's crazy if you want to connect the 
the knowledge of that because I guess I was living that life during that time asking you. I mean, everybody. I mean, yeah. In, 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 even in my own perspective, I, 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 I get it. I yeah. understand. Yeah, of course, it. of course. You know what I mean, right. and that's why I, I can, I have a, I guess, patience when it comes to people not really getting the concept, mm. um, because it's it's a process of coming into your own sense of personal perspective, and sometimes that takes time. You know, sometimes some people don't just don't get it at all, which is totally fine. Um, but for those who do. That's growth. And really the transition from the store is really is like, all right, well, you know, I've grown as an individual. So I'm pretty sure people in the city have grown mm. um, in their own sense of perspective, hopefully in their business and with what they like or what they're into. Um, but if not, cool. There's, there's like 12, 15 other stores doing what we did do. Right. So... Yeah, now you did brought up that about the, just the whole block was changing. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. you know, you think about... They put an H&M how, and things like that. You know, first not, of not all, first of all names, having, just, having a yeah. boutique yeah. in the French Quarter was n- never a thing. Yeah. Um, second of all, to see now, after 11 years, there are... Yeah. F- yeah. It, there's, there's a yeah. lot of boutiques. yeah. 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 In a two, three block radius that was never yeah, a, even thought. a thought. Yeah. yeah. So to say that, that that now this area has become relevant in that kind of But then when the the gas stations down just start selling them like, oh a year later, it's like, you know, and I still have these hats that I didn't pay like 40, 50, 60 bucks. I got exclusive joints that was only releasing for hours and but it's like, do brands really sit like one because you 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 your inside is always did that brand sell its soul for the dollar to the hood or did the hood or, or did that brand get get pretty much ambushed by the hood? And when I say hood, I just meant just not not as fashionable as 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 a fashionable consumer would want. Well, I mean, I like just... it's someone like that would study your brand and, and the meaning behind it. Like you know, there's some cats you saw had and just buy it. So, like, in other words, that brand is no longer irrelevant at all. Like, I won't never wear it, you know what I'm saying, no time soon. So, so, so this, is, this is where... Did they saturate themselves? Did they... So, like, so, so I, I can't speak for the brand's specifics, you know, how they were Yeah, yeah, in. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the, the matrix of, of how people see success um, and what it is they want to accomplish dictates that yeah. In any situation, you have to take a risk reward. Yeah. So, um, the risk in overexpansion is overconsumption, and now you have saturated the market. And now you have diluted yeah. your brand potency. They definitely um, did that. And you know that could be as simple as, uh, and it is a lot of things that can make a brand move that way, right? So let's say five years ago. As a brand, you may have wanted to be in Bloomingdale's, and right? Barney's, which right. that's that's no longer a thing. Yeah. Um, but you wanted to be the Saks Fifth and yeah. all of these bigger box retailers that were, you know, lux. But at the same time, I use this analogy quite often, right? So there is no difference between the guy that shops at H and M. And gets he goes shopping every week, right? Mm-hmm. Versus the guy that goes shop and get Givenchy or whatever other high end brand and can buy it every week. It's still consumption, right? Mm-hmm. So either you're consuming on the you're spending more more dollar per piece, or you're consuming at a lower price point. It's the consumption. So when you get to the point to where what's what's the purpose of your consumption? Is it just because I want to have these things, or do you appreciate them? And even from a brand perspective, it's like, are, are, is your brand driven with a purpose? Are you guys passionate about designing and and, and introducing your product to the the, the end consumer, um, or is it just a money play? Which there's nothing wrong with either end of it, um, but. Some companies build themselves to just burn out. Yeah. Um, tech companies do it all the time. Right? Yeah, that's true. We're going to build it up. We're going to, you know, we're going to somebody. So that, that business module is more rev- 
So it's not more, I guess yeah, okay. it's more real. Yeah. It's, it's more exposed now, but that's always kind of been. It's, it's more the business, not that brand, pretty much. Exactly. Got gotcha. you. So, gotcha. so people can consume by the business, mm. or they can get consume, consume with their vision. Got gotcha. you. Yo, PSA. To all of my business owners out there, I won't say small business because I believe if it's big in your head, then it's big to the universe. But anyway, here at the Major Conversation Podcast, we are offering sponsorships, ads. Um, you can reach out to me through my DM, Major Mook, um, or you can email me at wemajormnm at gmail.com. Once again, that's wemajormnm at gmail.com. And um, you can let me know about your business. I send you the offer sheet, and you can get all of your company's information promoted through the podcast or through the interviews. So, yeah, once again, that's wemajormnm at gmail.com, and also Major Mook on Instagram. You can DM me your information also. Peace. Back to the interview. So with that, um, um, I mean, today is actually um, Saturday, but this will come out the fi- um, this coming Friday. But we're actually um, doing this interview minutes after a, a huge release that that um, that you have with um, Pierre Moss. Yeah, Reebok Pierre Moss collaboration, uh, which you know that's a which you can get. I mean, Friday is really close, which you can still get it, of course, if you want to, you know, yeah, plug got, plug the few, address, plug the site. We a few sizes left. Uh, two two three North Peters. Uh, Get them while they last. Yeah, yeah, it goes quick. <laughs> it goes quick. Um, no, nah, but yeah, like even 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 like we were talking about this earlier. Like, with I did you know most of the you know I'm I, I'm not a sneakerhead. I I love dope things. Sneakers yeah. are a part of that. Yeah, and uh, I understand sneakerhead culture. It, it really takes me back to. Even before my time, when, when kids were into like trading uh, baseball, baseball cards, cards and all thing. that, yeah, like, yeah, it's that yeah. same sense of uh, thrill. Yeah, Rush. yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. It's yeah. just, it's, it's yeah. the same uh, same scheme. Um, so I I get it. I never collected baseball cards either, but I did. I, yeah. I, I I understand the psychology in it. Um, but for me, it's 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 always been about how something resonates with me and my own personal sense of style. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of people like to be accepted because it's, it's understood, right? Um, so it's understood that all right, a sneaker drop comes out and we're going to send a line and we're going to wait for the shoe, right? In some markets. Not, yeah. I mean, New Orleans is not necessarily one of those markets, but in, in the greater scheme of sneaker sneakerhead culture. Man, I, um, remember, I remember those Merrill's days. Yeah, we dropped yeah. a sneaker, bro. I promise you I'm not lying on this microphone. We were released like on a Saturday. Like this was on the SP Dunk days. I swear on Merrill's kids would be camped out like that Thursday night. I think that was I think like that, that was, was like nuts. the apex we talking of, 48 hours. Of, of sneakerhead yeah. culture. Yeah. I think that... That time frame, yeah, yeah, and this about? was—I mean, Flight Club was like they had like just one Flight Club, yeah, like, it, it, on the bread. Like, I was, think that was the sweet spot. Yeah, it was um, yeah. for all you current resellers. Like, yeah, you, they was yeah. they was it knocking was people over the head back then. Yeah, um, um, but getting back to you know getting back to what I was saying, it's I did a nighttime drop. I I I, I don't think I've ever heard of a nighttime sneaker drop. Um, and I really think because the 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 the, the perspective and I you know, I want to see how many people gonna follow this now. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> the, you know, but but the, from a genuine perspective, uh, I think that I don't think enough uh, brands or stores do celebrate their customers. Mm. Yeah, um, you are. You know, yeah, it's, you, it's, yeah. it's 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 a very defeated. Posture when you go and you try, you think you think you may have a chance to get a s- exclusive something, yeah. and you get up there and they're like no, and you just walk away empty. Yeah. And for me, yeah. it's just like, well, why? Because I, I should I should celebrate the fact that you're taking the time, effort, and energy to come see me. Yeah. Now you do a great job with that. Yeah. You, yeah, you and have, you have and engage with you in a way that where you at least walk away with an experience. Yeah. Now you you do the the in store DJs with the with the open bar and. 
Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely uh, outside of sacks doing something like that during the holidays to do a little holiday party. I believe that you might be the only person in this market that that do. I mean, there's people there's do. people that do it, but you know, not necessarily the way I do it. But I I, I don't I don't think it's with the same intention. Right. Um, right. Um, but that that's that's my perspective. You know, I I, I, I could be wrong. So but, okay. But but nonetheless. Um, it's always about pushing, pushing, testing, and you know, seeing and and really making people feel uncomfortable about what. I had a guy coming earlier today. Was like, man, the sneakers came out. I was like, yeah, you got to come back at six. And yeah, it'd have been easy. Me, like, I could sell you the shoes yeah, right now. Right, exactly. But I want you to come experience exactly. getting yeah. the shoe. Like, yeah. look, it ain't it ain't just me telling you to come back at six, and yeah. I'm not gonna reward you for it. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. come yeah. back. Just kick it with us. It's gonna be something different. You know what I mean? So, but that... You think that goes back to, I guess, the beginning of our conversation with the whole marketing, advertising company, all the things that, that you was installed, in, you know, that you had in your plans in the beginning stages? No, I, th- I, th- I think that's just a part of just who I am. Got you. Um, just, like just, I, I, just want to do some cool shit. So I, I, I had a guy come in, um, and, you know, one of these... Many a guys that come in and tell me they have they can get me supreme and yeah, and yeah, exclusives. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not interested. Um, which is you know, if you guys know anything about that, then yeah, that's a whole other conversation, yeah, right? right, right <laughs> but right. I told them, I said, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm not really interested. Like, the hype is, is cool, but it's just not my thing. Um, I named myself, and he was like, man, even if even if even if you could sell it for that, I'm like, yeah, but. I'm like, if it's that sweet, why are you trying to offer it exactly, to me? Exactly, yeah. But he was like, man, but how did you get started in doing this? I said, man, I really can't answer that question. He said, man, you, you got it. You got it. You, you got started somewhere. I said, man, all right, when I was one. <laughs> because I've lived a lifetime to be able to have this level of perspective. And I can't give you one moment how did, in how my life. How did he life. receive that? Huh? How did he receive that? He he was he it was profound for him. He was like, okay, wow. Right, like he right, was bet, like, bet, bet. okay, I respect that. I thought that. maybe you thought you'd been an asshole or something. No, no, okay, no, no. But right, I mean, yeah. I always, I always, yeah. even when I'm presenting a different point of view, I always try to speak with respect. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I gotcha, mean? Gotcha, like, right. you don't have to be an asshole to just have a different point yeah. of view. You know what I mean? Like, because at the root of everything, I want, I want, I want to let you know I respect. Your perspective, even if we don't have the same point of view, because that's that's who you are. Like you right. lived your life up until that point to have your level of understanding, and I wouldn't want anybody to question mine right. at my right, level. So, you know, we all come from some something to be yeah. to move forward. So, yeah, uh, definitely. Well, tell me a little more about. Um, I'm, a lot of people want to know what accounts means or things like that, but just more of the brands in the store, like so. I've noticed this is the second PL uh, Moss release. Um, I follow you on, on, on social media and things, and I definitely see you taking these flights and fashion shows. Um, is that is that a personal relationship more with him? I, I know he's African American. Um, no, I mean, is it yeah. the taste of the clothing? Is it? Nah. It, yeah. So for me, like with all the brands that I carry, I've made it a point to. It's a business move too. I made it a point to have relationships with. Not just the brand, but the designers. Yeah. Um, Can you tell me about just this? Just the last five months, how many fashion shows you didn't you didn't been to? Probably about. And name a name. I mean, probably a about, about four or five. About right. Four or five. I mean, the fashion shows are cool. Don't get me wrong, but for me, the fun part is like going and discovering new brands. Yeah. Like. Because the the fashion show, I mean, to be totally honest with you guys, like, yeah, I know you you it's, you, it's, you sit there for an hour yeah. to see seven seven minutes, six minutes. Yeah, it's a smoking of, mirror. Of, of, I got uh, it. No, I mean it's it's relevant. Like it it allows uh, the world to see. You know, like Tom Brown does some amazing fashion shows. Uh, me and Pierre Mars does some amazing fashion shows um, because it's the artistry and the presentation and. And uh, really, kind of like getting the full message out. Um, but if I'm having the conversations with the designer before the show, it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Or 
you know, I'm going to meet with them after. Right. Like, it's just like, all right, that's, that becomes the thing that's cool. You know, it's, it's fun to me. Right. Um, so the shows are definitely... I like I like going to the shows because I know when I when I do a live stream, people appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. You know I mean? yeah, so, I'm one of them. Uh, so I, I I try to go to as many as I can, um, but it's not necessarily like all right, I'm running to go to this this show uh, um, because I get more excited when people walk in the door and be like, wow, you That's know what I'm saying? Man. Like this is amazing. You ever thought about doing a fashion show here? I did, man. I, me and Tracy uh, with uh, NOLA Fashion Week, we've been talking. Okay. Um, and I, I really need to take the time to kind of like uh, build with her because I really think what she's doing is is is, is phenomenal for the city. Uh, I need to get her, her, you know, and, I need to get you know, her I, media, I, her media I, info. I definitely think there's a lot of room of improvement, and I think she deals with the same thing that I deal with. It's just the education and... And really, just kind of just getting people acclimated to what could what it could become. Um, so I know, you know, on both sides, it's like limitations. But I, I really want to kind of support, get a little bit more active in that side of of uh, New Orleans fashion scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely would like to do some things, not necessarily just on a real kind of basic runway. But really, some some real dramatic, monumental. Uh, nah, I know. Nah, I know the shit's gonna be special. Yeah. Whatever you do. Um, in switching gears, I'm gonna get out here in a little bit. Um, switching gears back to the music with the fashion, making it um, connect. You also, um, you know, you have the um, the Pusha T relationships or certain artists. Not just a name drop, but I say that because you did a concert a few years ago uh, with what. Um, Collaboration oh, with, with Heineken and the clips and, and things like that. Um, oh, is, do we can we get some more of that in the future, or is that just more of a a, a little five minute thing? No, or, I mean I think like you, I, I, you did Tiana Taylor. Yeah, we did Tiana through. Taylor. Yeah. We, I mean we did we did. Is, is that know, a for, thing? For, is, for, uh, for, for, for those of you that were fifteen five years ago and you don't, you're not familiar with Refresh. Yeah. Um, you know, to kind of educate you on what we have done in New Orleans, we were the first store in the South. Uh, no, I'm I'm lying because uh, they had they had Billionaires Boys Club in uh in 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 Houston at the uh, Galleria, the Barney's Co-op oh, okay. store. Okay. Um, but we were one of two, three stores in all the South to bring B- Billionaires Boys Club ice cream uh, down here. You yeah. know, we. We brought Naked and Famous. We introduced yeah. you guys to Come They Got Song. Oh, I got Naked and Famous on we right had, now. That's crazy. You know, we brought Pharrell in store to you guys. Yeah. We have Future, French Montana, Tiana Taylor, The Clips, Tiger, Lil Wayne, ASAP Rocky. Uh, you know, the list go on and on. That We did that before anybody uh, even was thinking on that level. And mind you, this is all afforded to... To 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 having that those relationships and uh, you know things that allow you to be able to move in that dynamic way. So you know uh, it's interesting to see everybody taking that same playbook now. But but I, I it, it, that's what you're supposed to do, right? You, yeah. You, you, you get the blueprint, you follow it, and you know uh, keep looking for the next book. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> that's real. Oh man. Um. I'm gonna skip over the future of fashion. I think we kind of pretty much talked about it. Like, what is the future of fashion? You think? You think we? Cause we we getting the bigger clothes again. Um, I I don't know if I wanna I wanna give that to Kanye or something, but it seems like the bigger baggy joints are coming back. I don't. No, um, I mean, I don't, I I really think with these with with the now generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me if I'm calling it. Out yeah, I, <laughs> but I feel like. The whole retro uh, thrifting thing is yeah. really unique in context because I feel like, once again, I feel like the youth culture is really trying to identify their own individual sense of personal style. And I'm saying that because you go in a thrift store, nobody else is going to be able to buy that one particular piece from 1987. Right. You know what I mean? It's only you. 
and whatever whatever weird kid in Japan that got the that's the same right. the same piece that you'll never meet. So, you know, I I think fashion and context. I think this is this is where the problem become is coming with a lot of these retail stores and these fashion houses is that they're missing the fact that there's a cultural perspective and there's a shift in how the youth are looking at fashion. And they're not looking at it just as, hey, well, he has that and I want that too. They're looking at it like, all right, that's cool. I can create this or I can identifiably make it uh, in my in, in my own perspective. So I think that is becoming more prevalent and it's harder for some of these uh, people to really grasp that concept because how do you grasp that? Like how do you, how do you, how do you understand the nuances of a generation or a culture if you don't, if you're not connected? Right, right. So it becomes, you know, you can't go to an ad agency and get the analytics on what changes tomorrow. Real talk. You, can't, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's, yeah. it, there, there, there is no algorithm that can give you that. That's a human experience. Um, so you can look at all these stats and numbers and, and uh, you know, looks and likes and dings and ticks, whatever it is you want to look at. If you're not touching and seeing it and you don't really understand it, it's like, it's like a, a, a sight person trying to read Braille and mm. you don't get it. You don't. You, know you don't mean? get it at all. So it, it, that, I think that in the context of what's happening now, today... Um, I think that's kind of like uh, and also that perspective allows people to get away from what is familiar with, to them so that's where Refresh comes into that perspective so you know a lot of this is I don't, I don't want to use the word psychic but you have to yeah. you have to yeah. see past yeah. today, and if you're if you can't you definitely if you're yeah. incapable of seeing past a day, you it, have. it's it's it, yeah, the you, world is going to be hard to navigate. I'm teaching myself how to write code. I'm 43 years old, right? Yeah, and for me, the first time I tried to teach myself how to write, it didn't make any sense to me, and. Uh, I went through an experience with the store where I was really like gun holes trying to get the website up and develop. And then coming up, I know a little bit about coding, like a smidget, because you know, back in the day, you had to basically run codes to do commands on the computer. Mm. Um, so if you had to run a, a program, you had to put run blah, 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 mm. to run the actual disk. I don't know if you remember that, floppy yeah, disk. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So that's, that's coding at a very elementary level. Um, you know, but for me to be at my age and really be like, you know what, I'm still going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through an experience where I was paying somebody to do the website for the store. Because before it was pretty, you know, we didn't really have like an online presence. It was really more like a blog. Yeah. And you could yeah. buy a couple of things on there. Um, but when I was transitioning to space, I was like, oh, we need the website. It needs to be, yeah, official. you know, it needs to be something that gives us a... a, a a fingerprint in the global e-com platform. Right. And, you know, I hired a kid that was Tulane, graduated with a degree in web development. And, uh, you know, we talked about a fee. I was like, all right, a month passed, two months passed. I'm oh, like, wow. Man, look, just I want to just sell one thing right. today. <laughs> right. Can I right. do that? Right. Oh, well, I have to. I said, look. I'm going to give you whatever it is that I owe you. And that's it. But I'm a, you can hold on to that. Yeah. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. It took me a week. Wow. Right? Now I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in there like yeah, literally yeah. 18, 19 hours. A, like my eyes just. Yeah. But you own it. But I'm like, it got to get done. Yeah. But this is, this yeah. is where it goes back to, all right, I know I can. Right? So it wasn't the question of if. Yeah. It was just, all right, let me yeah. get it better. And I probably, I, if I, you know what, and I probably can show you the first store website that I, that I did. Mm -hmm. That it was rough. Right. Right. But that's crazy. You know what I could do? I could sell something. Right. right. Yeah. 
<laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So for me, that was an accomplishment. Definitely. And I knew from there I was going to get better. Yeah, like you and, said, you used to about picking the pieces up and, yeah, and so, running with it. So, but I was willing to take that time to not only move the business forward, but also educate myself. And had that experience allow me to be a better person, a better yeah. businessman, a better... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Having that, uh, you need to find. So you take having my, that I, intimate experience. So Hendrix, if you take too long with, in the future with all these mixes with Zeno and them and all that, I'm gonna fight. Yeah, you try to do it myself. Is that what you saying? No, I yeah, mean, look, look. yeah, because he know I can't do that. At look, all. look for me. <laughs> nah, I'm messing look, with you. Look, look for me, right? You know, the, the one thing I tell uh, my employees, it's a blessing to have employees, right? It's a luxury. Yeah, definitely. Because at the end of the day. Uh, I'm I'm paying you to do a job that I should be able to do if you were not here. That's real, right? And well, I'm, and well, I'm well, saying there's, there's well, some technical do, aspects to that. Yeah, is is that more of a job quote, or is that, or is that a life quote? So I think that's more of a life quote. Yeah, definitely. Because let 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 let's say if uh, I was just talking to Cab earlier about this. I said, let's let's say if we had to get out of here, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, the world was going this, you know, going this shit, and we had to get on this one ship and to get to wherever we were at, or wherever we gonna get to to kind of rebuild, right? And everybody's coming up to the ship, and they're like, oh well, what do you do? I'm a carpenter. I'm a gardener. I'm a mm-hmm. whatever. I'm an electrician. I'm this and the third. And, and the guy comes like, like, I'm rich. And it was like, okay, but what do you do? I pay everybody else to do so. Right? Right. But your wealth means nothing, nothing on this boat. Because once we get where we're going to get, all these people are going to be rich. Yeah. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they're yeah. coming with yeah. a, tool. a skill set. So yeah. when slavery ended, right, and black people had their freedom or have their freedom, the concept of freedom, and they moved on and they brought land and they and they developed and they grew their businesses, you know, uh, what did they leave those plantations with? Skills. Mm. So if everybody that had the skills of the plantation left, what are you doing now? Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, post, I don't get, I don't, don't get, I don't want to get the dates wrong, but let's say uh, 1950s, uh, the prison population consisted of mostly white males. And the reason is because white males weren't skilled workers. Right. They didn't have the ability to go get a job that required a skill set because they were removed from that sense of perspective. Um, you know, you, you, you think about the Tulsa, Oklahoma, where they did the, 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 the terrorist act against the black community that was prospering in all, all fronts and all levels. Um, that is very telling in what it affords you to have the skills. And you, they can tell you, well, you can't read the book, and you can't mm-hmm. do this, mm-hmm. and you can't do that. But you know what? I know how to grow some vegetables, and I know how to, you know what I'm saying, build a house, and, you know, all these things that are required for survival and yeah, pretty much the, necessities. The, yeah, um, teach so how yeah, to So, yeah, keep reading huh? that book, but... Yeah. You ain't gonna learn how to how to chop this wood and, and build yeah. this house. Yeah. Just in the book. Right. You know what I mean? So uh I've I've always been a person that I can't tell anyone to do anything if I'm not even I can't grasp the concept. Because how am I how am I effectively being a good boss? Yeah. And at the same time being Understanding of what it is that you're that, going that person's through, going through, yeah, definitely to do that job, yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, definitely. Because that now you have you got to have a different perspective on mm-hmm. that, you know, and yeah, yeah, and that can mess the whole communication up of of the of the task. Yeah, yeah if I don't have, I have no idea what you, yeah. you know, is, is faced with. Nah, yeah. I got you on that. Right, and, you know, and, and, and it's not even about it's it's it, it's not even about learning. It's sometimes just participating. In it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And just yeah, being in the yeah, being yeah, like I'm, yeah. I'm here. I don't know what you're doing, or yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, but yeah. look, how can I help yeah, you right, figure yeah, it out? Definitely. You know definitely. what I mean? So uh, my last two questions we get out. Well, one's a question, in the, which is you know you're gonna know the answer to that really quick. 
But the other one, um, we were talking about just the whole consumer support thing. Uh, I'm, I know you know about Major Juice, um, a beverage I started uh, mm-hmm. with a partner of mine. And um, me and him, uh, I mean, it, it, it wasn't a bump head, but I used to always have to correct him. Um, and, and, he, and he's a um, great guy. He's uh, one of those pro-black guys that, um, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm sorry if I, I'm wording this wrong, but, you know, I, like, I know the new thing is, you know, support black businesses, support this, support that. And I used to tell them, like, when we have pop-ups, which we did one here, actually. That was real, a, a big-time success. Um, I used to tell them, bro, stop posting support major juice. I was like, I don't want supporters. I want customers. Yeah. I, I, I used to tell, give them that. I used to, like, I don't, like, tell my homeboy, you don't mind to run to Walmart to, to support Coca-Cola. I say, you don't mind to go grab me a Coke because yeah. I want a Coke. So, you know, I, you know, we'll go back and forth, but he was like, yeah, okay, I finally get it. Like, how do you, from someone that's, you know, living this, like, do you want, you know, your homeboys and cousins or just some supporters to come by? So probably, or, or you read, a, you know, the customer, the consumer? Mm, I mean, you know, like. Or do you feel like they're, is, they're, they're the same? Like, I feel like they're not the same. Like, I don't need someone buying one juice saying they supporting me. Like, I need somebody waking up needing that juice and, you know, wanting to come get it. Like, I don't have to know you or this and that or, you know, like, you don't have to post my juice online after you buy it saying well, I, I mean, support it's, it's, it. There's two ways to look. Like, for me, it's like, it, that's, it can go a multiple two of the ways, like, how, how, how I see it, right? So, I don't look, I don't, I don't think of people that come in here as customers. Yeah. Not to cut you off, but anyway, like, I'm not, like, my, like my, if, if Hendrix got a shirt going. Yeah. I'm gonna buy that shirt, but one time I'm never gonna wear. It. Like I like I don't have to support you if that shit's whack or it's not done right or this and that. Like, no, I feel so like, no, me, so so mediocrity on any level I don't yeah. support. Like, and I'm saying I'm I'm not saying that that's bad. Everybody has to start somewhere, but at the level I'm at, yeah, I'm pushing you to become the best. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm presenting myself. My business in the, in the in a form that constitutes that you either have to understand it or you do not, right? right? And you know when I have young designers coming in here that look like us mm-hmm. that are presenting themselves in a very ill way, mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, that's not that's not that's not what uh, and I, that's not how you should be presenting yourself. And I'm telling you that because you look like me. Right. Nobody else, they probably laugh at you and run you out the door. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, with the whole Gucci, uh, you know, like, and all these other brands kind of position themselves, whether it's ill-postured or, you know, lack of uh, understanding or a misjudgment call, whatever it is. I mean, we we live in a world that is not perfect. But... You know, everybody said we're boycotting, 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 but boycotting ain't going where? Mm. Like, what are you? What What are we standing behind that's on that level? Mm. And you can't boycott if 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 the if the if the the basis of your boycotting is I right, this European company has disrespected mm. uh, black culture and. You're going to another European company, <laughs> right? And buying it's like you're going to a different master. You know what I'm saying? Thing. Yeah. So that and there's nothing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Gucci. I, you know, they've created the, a division um, yeah. catered towards yeah. Uh, yeah. Multi, a cultural uh, sensitivity, um, which is cool. But for me, it's like, all right, cool. Now, now I know they care. Yeah. Now, do they care because their purpose is? I, we made a mistake, or do they care because they want to preserve their dollars? Yeah, it's always a meeting before the meeting. So, so you know, I, yeah. I, I, I can't speak to that to that point, but I can speak to the fact that, all right, who, well, who's the next Gucci designer that look like us? Like, who? What? What's that brand? Who does he? What does he look like? What is his story? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and you know, you got brands like Pierre Moss. Uh, I'm and, a fan of Fear of God too, uh, Jerry. Yeah, you know, all yeah. of these emerging 
uh, even younger at the time. Like these, this, this, this is a young guy from Nigeria. He's 21. Very, you know, he's very smart. I mean, I, I have long conversations with him, and and uh, it's just, it's just amazing to see these younger kids having perspective on what it is that they know is true. Mm. And and I'm saying true that I right, well you're trying to suppress my brand mm-hmm. or you're trying to get me into a deal that doesn't benefit me with my brand right. you know to be able to talk at 21 have that conversation at 21 I'm like all right man y'all, y'all got it you know what I'm saying like definitely I I I respect that you know what I mean and for me it's it's refreshing uh, no pun intended but it's it's definitely refreshing to see that. Uh, that it's it's going to happen. It's happening. Yeah, like that's that's a perfect subway. Um, to my last question, final last question, refresh, definition of that for for you regarding fresh. Yeah, that's the definition. That's just definition regarding <laughs> fresh. Perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> oh, no, man. I mean you know like it. it people ask and they come in now because I'm I've I've, I've kind of like refocused the branding and uh, the visuals and. All the things that they're accustomed to, right? Um, so it looks different, but I'm like, yo, we've always been R E cold and fresh, but we were catering to a younger demographic then, and Makes now sense. that we've elevated, it's regarding fresh. Mm. Um, so that was in preparation of the growth. Mm. So when you're thinking about your businesses out there, people, think about how you're growing, not what you're doing today, what you're doing ten years from now. Uh, or even allow yourself to have that perspective. Even artists, you know, uh, most artists that come with a song and you be like, wow, that song's popping, is everywhere. And you don't hear from them after that one song because they wasn't prepared for the next phase cr- of their career. And, you know. That's, and, cra- that's, and, cra- that's crazy you say that on the cut y'all because I was going to end it with that. But, you know, due to the musical background and, you know, the 43, but like you got that damn Pharrell water, something you drink. Like, do you do you see yourself going back to music, dealing with artists? Because I we we didn't even tip into that. Like I like I know about you with the management of you know let's I, say I, I, uh, I, I, Teen Robots and and, and I do and I do I do more. I mean, music. I've just started listening to music, like discovering new music, and so I left the music industry. I want to say like what oh five oh six because you know now it's a different ball game than when, when we were in it. It's but I, it's I totally was so I was so burnt out, man. Oh, like it trust was, me, I know. Yeah, it was just you know my ears were just like done. Yeah, and I just literally probably in the last year and a half, two years, uh, just started really listening to music and kind of uh, appreciating it again. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I want to thank you also. Yeah. Um, um, Sean, he's always supported everything I've, I've, I've um, throughout, you know, try to get my visions across. Um, you know, you come to the Zeno Moonflower shows. I send him a text. He, he always comes out and, and supports the artists that I was working with. Um, I do private parties. He show up. So I definitely appreciate that. But um, when you was coming to these shows, were, were they just more, you know, just coming for the vibes or, or was that the time you was getting that music back? Mentally, I guess, and just enjoying it, just, it, was it again. A, a mental thing, man. You know, cause uh, mentally, and I think the focus on what it is that I wanted to do, cause music was so much a part of my life for so long, um, it consumed me in a lot of different ways, and I wanted, I needed to be consumed by things that allowed me to grow as a person, but also grow as a businessman and uh, get back to being able to appreciate those things. Because, right. you know, you know, time passes, and when you get older, man, it, hmm. days, days seem like minutes, man. And uh, That's real. That's real. And with that said, it's past midnight. That was a perfect way to yeah. say that. Uh, and we both a little older, so let's get our ass out of here, man. Um, Definitely want to appreciate this sit down. Uh, you made this uh, come out party with the uh, Major Conversation podcast real easy for me because, like I said, I mean, this is our regular talk 
without mics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I definitely look at you for you know for the Jews and, and giving me all of the the free consultation that you do and things like that. Um, and yeah, man, just more success to the to the to the boutique to the store. Um, I know you're leaving in the morning. You're flying out, you know, safe travels. I don't know. I think I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm gonna miss that. Flight. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I, I definitely want to come pick up that size eight in them black sometime this week if you get them for me. Nah, nah, you good. I yeah, think, I think they still. I tucked them away for you. Yeah, appreciate appreciate that. Well, that's it, man. I definitely appreciate it. Um, yeah, show on refresh. Any more? You want to give the website again, the address? Any of that? Nah, man. It, like it's not about me, man. I I, I, I definitely. Uh, I want us to be what we need to be, not only for the world, but for ourselves as individuals. And I'm saying when I say us, I mean the culture, uh, people of color, um, people that understand, that aren't of color, that understand the struggle. You know, uh, let's get better, man. Let's just, just, just perfection is a concept and we're always striving to be better every day. But uh, let's be the best we can be and love and respect and honor our, our own sense of personal integrity, man. So there you have it. Major conversation podcast. Hendrix, take us out. We made you. Yeah, nigga, we made you. Yeah, nigga, we made you. Yeah, homie, we made you.